sing this. Oh, this is night, night, night number 19 of 30 days of love songs. And this song, this night, I'm going to be singing the first love song I ever wrote. And then I'll tell you about it. It's called Many Fish in the Sea. Many fish in the sea, but there's only one for me. I think. I'll start again. Many fish in the sea, but there's only one for me. Only one. Only one. Many birds in the sky. Only one will please my eye. Only one. Only one. Many stalks of song, very first love song I ever wrote for Fred Stewart, called Freddie at the time, but I was called Debbie at the time. Don't ever say either of those to either one of us. And it happened because my grandmother, my little Jewish grandmother, came out from L.A. to North Carolina where um, I was living with my whole family then where we were living in Pufftown, North Carolina, near Winston-Salem, North Carolina. And I was in love with this, with Freddie Stewart. Fred, Fred, sorry, I'll say Fred now. Fred Stewart, you know, tall, blonde, sophisticated. He's an artist. He's a, you know, a, one year ahead of me in school, completely in love with him. And my grandmother is like, she's, so first of all, here we are in North Carolina, almost no Jews. So my grandmother is distressed about that in the f you know, first place. But now I'm in love with this kid, Fred. I'm s he's singing in the Baptist church choir. So I'm singing in the Baptist church choir just because I want to be near him. So she says, she says, you know, and I, he know he does, he's not, he knows me. He's like friendly with me, but he's not, he's not having any of it. He's not romantically interested in me. Um, at all. And, uh, and so I'm, you know, moping about that. And my grandmother says, well, you know, there's many, many fish in the sea. And that, that my friends, that phrase is what got me to write my first love song. So I guess I can chalk it up to Fred Stewart, but also to my grandmother, Anna. Also to the American Songbook because I was playing a lot of that music I really loved that music and it was really had infused me and so you know I created my own version of it in my own little you know teenager way many fish in the sea but there's only one for me only one
that was the first love song I ever wrote. And I think it kind of shows where I was at with love because it's, you know, it's just da da dee, da da dee. I mean, it's pretty, it's not, I don't know that it's so heartfelt, but it was as heartfelt as I could get. I, I don't think I would have known how to write, you know, like a, a deep love song. Many fish in the sea but there's only one for me. Oh, the other really cool thing about this, um, it is the first song that I got a copyright for. So when I was a kid, I just wanted to be a composer. And so I would write these songs and I would, I, I'm sure I have it somewhere. I should have gone and looked for it. It was torture for me to write them out because um, I really didn't know how to write music. And I remember when I asked my um, my stepdad how to write music, I remember him taking out a piece of music paper and he gave it to me and he said, here's here's the music paper. He said, this line here, that's C, and then, you know, all the other notes, they just go up, you know, one. So you figure it out. I'm pretty sure that's all he knew. So that's all he told me. But... Um, but anyway, so I would like, you know, painstakingly write these things out, you know, many fish in the sea, and I'd send it off to the copyright office. And, you know, we lived out in the country and I'd wait and wait and wait for the, you know, for the, for my copyright to come back. And, uh, I just, I, that, that's what made me feel real. Like I got a copyright. Um, and this was the first song that I ever copy wrote. I'll sing it the chords, although it's a very, very, very simple song, but it's got two really cool things in it. And of course, it's an original. I'm not really expecting to hear, um, you know, anybody cover it. But it's, it's a F major 7 and then a G minor 7 with a C in the bass. F major 7. And there's F major 7, C sus. F major 7, G minor 7, G minor 7, C sus, F major 7, but it's probably a 6, and F major 7, C sus, F major 7, F major 7, C sus, F major 7, D minor 7, G minor 7, But in order to play it, I had to make a C sharp, which I think is actually a D flat. La la la. So if I had to spell that, I'd say it looks like a G, E flat, D flat, which with N and F. So and that's probably a, oh God, it's probably a G minor, it's probably G diminished, but I never understand. Is it half diminished? Is it whole diminished? Whatever. So I'll say a G minor seven, G minor seven flat five. That's what I'm going to call it. And he's talking grass in the grass in. Ah ha 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 ha. Oh, duh. Okay. Yes, it makes perfect sense. It's a G, I believe it's a G minor seven flat five. And then it goes to C seven, well, C flat nine. And you know what's great about that? Is that that would be the normal two five if you were in a minor key. So I'm borrowing, oh my God, there I am, 13 years old, and I'm borrowing that from the minor key. Anyway, many stocks, G minor seven flat five, C flat nine, F major seven, then G minor seven flat five, C seven flat nine, F major 7, third time, G minor 7 flat 5, C 7 flat 9, and actually because this is a lever harp, I can't actually make a flat 9, so I'm sharpening the C, so I've got a C natural here and a C sharp here. And B, F major 7, then G minor 7, C sus, A. G minor 7, C sus, 
A minor 7, D7, G minor 7, C sus or C, the 7 flat 9, then oh, whatever this is. This is it's got an E flat. Got an E flat and then a C sharp, so it's probably an E flat seven, some kind of E flat seven, which I think is called a tritone substitution. In any case, it substitutes for a dominant chord, but it's actually a whole step below. Let's go back and let's go back and look at that. So it's G minor seven. And I'm just about to resolve to F, sorry, I know this is geeky, but whatever. So I'm just about to resolve to F, but I'm going to E flat instead. Now, I don't know what all those other notes are. I just know that I like the sound of them, but I've got an E flat and a D flat. So I think it's some kind of E flat chord. If anybody's here who knows the answer, please share it. Yeah, I think it's E, G, B, e, e flat, G, B flat, D flat, so that's an E flat 7 with a 9, okay, and then it resolves up to the F. It's a very cool thing, it's a very fun, um, um, you know, ending for a tune, so I'm going to do it again. G, G minor 7, C 7 flat 9, then Just do that again. But there's another cool thing here. And I don't know, I don't know what to call that, but it's very cool because I'm going F and I've got F A here. Just sideways. Or I could go or I could go la da So there's a lot of different ways, you know, to, to play that particular part of the tune. And 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 each of them has a different feeling. Versus da 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 So that's on F, F major and C sus, something like that. F major and C sus, and G minor 7, C sus, F major 7, F major 7, C sus, F major 7, F major 7, C sus, F major 7, D minor 7, G minor 7, C sus, F major 7, then this other thing that goes down to the C. I forgot what it was. G minor 7 flat 5, C 7 flat 9, G, F. So really it's just the 2, but it's as if it were a minor key. 2 minor 7 flat 5, 5, 7 flat 9 the, of, the, of the F, and it just repeats that. Da dum da da dum da da dum da 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 and it goes back to G minor 7, C sus, then the 3, which is E minor 7, then D7, which is a secondary dominant, because I made that D, which would normally be D minor in that key, I made it into a major, so then we can go up to G minor 7, C sus, A minor 7, and I can either play D minor here or D major. Then G minor 7, C sus, and this, and E flat 7, flat 5, going to this. Of course I had no 
no idea that that's what I was doing as a kid. I wasn't really thinking about that. I was just thinking about, you know, what sounds, what makes it sound like a love song. And, and what's so cool is that anytime you get words, you know, so this happened because my grandmother says, well, there's many fish in the sea. Well, every phrase has its own, you know, rhythm. Many fish in the sea. I mean, I think if you just say that out, many fish in the sea, the, you're going to start singing it, many fish in the sea. And then it goes on from there. Uh, so, so that was my first love song. And, and I don't think it was very vulnerable. And this whole challenge is about a bunch of things. It's about showing up every night and seeing what happens. And one of the things that I'm discovering is that I have developed a lot of repertoire that I thought was not playable. I've recovered or reclaimed a lot of pieces that I didn't think were playable. And my whole mindset about this has changed. So when I was thinking about what to play tonight, and I'm, I'm tired because I got up really early um, and shoveled snow, um, but my but I, I I'm starting to think like well maybe I can what else can I see whether it's actually possible versus thinking ah that doesn't work you know that doesn't work on the lever heart blah 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 so it's been really um, great to open up my mind about what may be possible and now I get to say hello hello Kathleen Manning. Charis Bruner, she says, ah, a love song, ah, a love song. And someone's name that I can't read, and Joanne Sherdina are watching, and Susan Hironaka, she is watching, I say. Hello, I say hello. And then Norma Schramm is watching. And Robert Nilo is watching. Jenny Bukas, Lucas, Jenny, oh wow, Jenny Bukis. I'm going to say that wrong. I have no idea if you're in France. Of course, you're not in France. And now I'm being an idiot. Okay, anyway. Jenny, 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 Jen, Jenny is watching. And Janice, Sean Vetter is watching. Kathy Ann is watching. And Harold Wiggy Lewerth is watching. And I have to go back. Uh oh. And Michelle. McMurrin Park is watching, and Hel Helen shall write, she's here, and Mar Martin Castillo is watching, and Ellen Jordan, she's also watching. Boy, Facebook doesn't come up with many extra words and Victoria Johnson thinks this is cute <laughs> thank you Victoria and Liz Brown is here and I don't know if I can go back anymore so I'll go forward and hello 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 and you got to know that when I was a kid I also I loved Ethel Merman. So there's a little bit of Ethel Merman in here. I could sing it Ethel Merman style. Many fish in the sea, but there's only one for me. Only one. I don't know if that's Ethel Merman. Only one. Many birds in the sky, only one will please my eye. Only, only one. I say, only one. Many stalks of grass in the meadow. There's many honeybees in a hive. Many rays of golden sunlight. 
this you know, just as sure as you're alive. Many birds in the sky, many fish in the sea, but there's only to come here and see you every night like this little window well all right so last night I sang you Skeeter Zama Haman as the as the lullaby and um, there's another lullaby um, that was Kentucky babe um, and I she, she always used to sing good night my love and that that was really nice um, but there was another one too. Um, well, the biggest, the, the the lullaby that she sang the most, and it was just so simple. She just would go, Ah, baby, Ah, baby, Ah, baby. Bye, baby bunting, daddy's gone a hunting to catch a little rabbit skin. I don't know if I like this. To put my baby bunting in. Ah, baby. Ah, oh, baby. Ah, baby. Good night. <laughs> well, I will see you tomorrow. You know, you can sing yourself to sleep. I've done it. <laughs> Good night.